On this week's episode, we are grading trades, and I got bad news for some teams. I am a tough professor. John Tortorella went full Jordan Belfort and refused to leave the bench when Wes McCauley tried to pigeon toss him. And we are finally seeing some new OT strategies, which I have been asking for. And the Detroit Red Wings are in an ultimate free fall. Fans are panicking. What do we do? This episode of the Empty Netters podcast is brought to you by Factor. Factors ready to eat meals make eating better every single day easy. Wherever tomorrow takes you, be ready to rock with Factors pre prepared, chef crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. Ice is ready, and we are back with another episode of the Empty Netters podcast. We're in our first week of the double app drop. We had Frank Vetrano on Monday. Today. Goddamn. Wonderful. Yeah, but like people, we're recording today. People hear this on Wednesday, Wednesday you know. but it came out Monday. He's he's the guy. Oh, he's he's. I mean, I know we say everyone's awesome, but Frank is so awesome. He's just such a homie. It's that New England connection. Man. Yeah, yeah, he just exactly. Feels like right. a friend, and I love him. So glad he stayed. Oh, I same, I, I can say now. Yeah. We obviously talked to Frank, guys. Uh, if you haven't listened to it, guys, stop right now, please. Go to the YouTube, smash subscribe, download that episode on Spotify, Apple, whatever. Listen to it; it's just so fun. It's thirty-seven minutes. Frank Vetrano's the man. Has such a cool story. Uh, when we were with him, we talked about the trade deadline because it was what was that Monday, Tuesday? It was Tuesday. We were with him Tuesday. Tuesday. The deadline was that Friday. Yeah, and we we kind of candidly were like, "What do you think is going to happen?" and We've expressed to him that we wanted him to stay in Anaheim, and he shared the exact same sentiment. He was like, oh, my God, I want to stay here so bad. So it was pretty awesome Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern rolling around and us all being like, whew, we made Dude, it. Dude, especially because we left the rink Tuesday, Wednesday morning. Like heads were rolling in Anaheim already, and I was oh, yeah. like, "Oh God, <laughs> like, I can't. We're not even going to get this episode out." Yeah, and then, it was stressful, and, yeah. man. Stressful was stuff. Uh, we listen. The trade deadline week is a roller coaster. It's Christmas morning. It's Fourth of July. It's everything all rolled up into one. That was a blast. I was exhausted on Friday. Yeah. Truly, I'm not even making a joke. Yep. Like, trying to stay on top of all the trades, reporting all of it, and talking all about all of it. So fun. But we've got. The last, you know, quarter or so of the season here now. A lot of guys on new teams, a lot of tight races for playoffs. Yep. So we've got a ton to talk about. Let's jump right out the gate with our no bucky warm up. Let's talk about torts. Yeah. Can someone confirm what he did initially? Was it just like He's pissed about the penalties. Yeah, to my knowledge, he was just irate about the penalty calls and just the officiating in general. I mean, his town, his team was down four rip at that yep. point. He was uh, pulling, uh, pulling his goalie, making a goalie change at that point as well. And uh, I think he was just, you know, it was too early for him to 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 be leaving. Yep. Uh, all I'll say is this: <clears throat> um, we, I like Wes. I like watching Wes. Um, Love Wes. Uh, our boy Chris Rooney speaks extremely highly of Wes. I'm pretty yep. sure Wes is the is the president of the Ref Association. And Rooney Bruins is, is the VP. VP. Yeah. Um, so the, clearly the, the union thinks highly of Wes. I see a lot in the comments, not just on our posts, on a lot of hockey accounts, people being like the 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 Wes. It, people pay to watch me ref McCauley show. You know, like I, like I see a lot of that shit. Um, this is a unstoppable force meets immovable object for me where I'm like, Wes is the man, isn't going to take any shit and, and has earned the right to not take any shit. Torts has been a soundbite machine his whole career, but certainly this year. Mm -hmm. And as Blake said, he's frustrated. That's what happens. The, maybe it was a quick toss, you know, like I wasn't watching the game live and I kind of love, not kind of love. I extremely love Torts being like this. No, especially if he felt like he didn't do something that bad considering how much you used to get away with in the league. But I do think it put Wes in a tough spot because there was just, in my opinion, no universe where you get to go, all right, never mind, you can stay. Yeah. So that, that's why it was kind of brutal. I loved every single thing about this. I thought it was an old school WWE showdown. Vince McMahon versus Stone Cold yeah. Steve Austin just <laughs> talking smack to each other. Everyone just, I loved everything about this. To me, it was an old school WWE MF and match back and forth between, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Just two showmen screaming at each other, not backing down. I love it from Wes. I love it from Torts. I agree. Anyone who's 
getting mad at Wes saying, you know, it's it's not the Wes McCall. He's not doing that. Yeah. There's a ref or a coach screaming at him, and he's given it right back. I absolutely loved every second of it. The thing that I find interesting is people forget that Torts is coaching a playoff team right yeah. now. Yeah. There was a part of me that was like, oh, yeah, it's funny. Like, this is, you know, Torts, he's just getting the boys fired up. Like, that to me felt like in baseball when a manager's like, I got to change the tide here. Uh-huh. That was a bad call. I'm going to willingly get kicked out here to send a message to my boys. That's what it felt like for Torts. They're losing 4 nothing. He's kind of like, I got to do something here. It is a little tough, though, that he's like, I'm pissed because we are a playoff team and we need all of our points right now. I can't stand the 50K fine and yes. the two-game suspension. Ridiculous. What the hell are we doing, NHL? The, I'm, I'm appalled. I love Wes kicking him out. Yeah, and, 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 and sticking to it. Like, yes. all the, I'm not leaving. I'm like, yeah, you are leaving, dude. It, but that's the end of it. Totally agree. It's a, you got, listen, you got mad. You got worked up. You started screaming at a ref. You got pigeon tossed. That's fine. I have no problem with that. And I love Torts going, no, f*** off. I'm not leaving. That was awesome. But... West sticks to his gun and goes, and goes, yes, you are leaving. That should have been it. You've kicked him out. He got a game misconduct. If you want to fine him, go, uh, sometimes these fines, I just roll my eyes because I'm yeah. like, okay, the hits I get, something like this, you don't need to fine torts for this. But if you're going to, give him a $5,000 fine Yep. and just go, we're done here. 50 k and then two games? What? What are you possibly winning by kicking Torts off the bench for two games? It's a playoff team. It's so it's a playoff team. Regardless of that, it's just so stupid. The thing that I don't understand is it's probably this like it's a it's a precedent thing. It's a message thing. We can't have co- shut up, man. No one is worried about this. Don't toss him for two games. It's so stupid. I hope he appeals it. I mean, do they play today? Uh, we. It's just mental to me that that awesome moment yeah. resulted in this big overreaction from the league. It's just calm down. Pathetic. Give him a 5000 kick him out of that game. Yep. $5,000 fine. We're yep. done here. And and that's and we and never speak of it again. I can't believe we even have to talk about it. My favorite part about the whole thing, I don't know if you two have seen this, the Flyer CEO uh announced he's paying the fine. Oh, yes. Love yes. that. That is a <laughs> sick move. So their the next two games are Tuesday, Thursday, both at home uh, against the Sharks then against the Maple Leafs. Yeah. Um I don't know if you guys saw this. The one thing I loved was they were celebrating the uh the 20th anniversary of the 04 Cup team that Torts coached. Oh, sick. And when he was going off, they f- they on the broadcast, <laughs> they uh, shot up to the box where all those guys were, uh-huh. and they're all pointing at the TV, like laughing their ass off, just loving it. Like they, it was, it was. That's good, their guy. Was awesome. That's their guy. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It, 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 it was. A, I loved every single thing about it. Yep. Torts got a good reaction from his team, from the fans. Everyone loved it, and, and it's just, it's not that deep. Uh, oh, is dude. what I'm saying to the NHL. Calm what, down. What he said is no different than like if I get tossed and I'm still screaming at the ref. I'm not saying I'm not leaving, but I'm just still screaming at them. Yeah. Those are the same things to me. Agree. Like we're just continuing our argument. I've been tossed. Once you get tossed, that's why you have a window to keep going because you're like I've been tossed and fuck you. Yeah. Get your money's worth. Yeah. So 100 percent ridiculous. Crazy stuff. Next thing, um, new new little wrinkle in the OT strategy of these teams, Dan. The uh, you must be thrilled about this. I'm thrilled. Well, we got a lot of work to do still, but I'm very excited to see. <laughs> and big shout out to Merle's dude. Uh, did you see that post? Merle, yes, Merles has been saying that in Russia, teams have been pulling their goalie on three and three. Then it was happening in Sweden, and he was like, "It's moving west. It's moving west. Yeah. Like eventually, an NHL team's going to do it." And the Wild pulled it off. Yeah, um, I love the move. Uh, I think there is, you know, you when you need the dub, you need the extra point. Yeah. I'm like, do it, dude. Who cares? Like, you at, at the point they're in, these points matter. Yeah, the stage they're in, these points matter. It did make me laugh a little bit because I just think the Wild are completely out of it. So I'm like, yeah, okay, hell yeah, dude. <laughs> That's why they were a perfect guinea pig. I know, exactly. Because, you know, if if the Red Wings did this, if the Islanders did this, yeah. and it doesn't work, you look like an yep. asshole. But the Wild, go for it, man. You're playing with house money. Immediate goal. And you know what I had a thought when I first saw this? I wondered, because before I saw the highlight, I just saw the headline, Wild pull their goalie in overtime. Mm. I was like, oh, I bet they got a power play. And then also pulled their goalie for the five on three. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's a no brainer. Cause like five on three, 
is like you, you ha automatic. You have to score. Yeah. Um, and when I saw it was even strength, I was like, oh shit, they they really went for it. But we've talked to en enough players that are like, when the other team has three, even if you only have four, mm -hmm. it's pretty easy to get one. Like you should get one every time. And I don't know. We should someone should look up like the power play success rates in overtime. Yeah. But the four when they got three, we should you should bag it. And I yeah. think this is a move. Like if you are banging at the end of the year for a playoff spot and you are one point away, you get killed. You're right. If you pull the goal and they score, you get killed. But I'm like, I just got to believe it's a high enough percent rate that you do it. I agree. I mean, I think it's awesome. If you get a, a good clean rush in possession, come to the bench. Yeah. Set it Pop up. Someone else up there. It's it's It was awesome to watch. Yep. The Wild have been electric all year with, they're getting a lot of underdog wins yeah if you're up on the bet mgm game if you're if you're taking some action when the wilder dogs they've gotten some crazy wins and that one was just a classic good lord what are you guys doing i love it pretty sick because no because you can still ice as in you can get penalized for icing yeah when they're doing the pull the goalie thing so it's not like they can just have free rips at it either yeah. you know so i'm into it dude it's, uh, it's a Big balls move, but I'm into it. I am too. Uh, one of you guys wanted to talk about Bedard. I want you to take it away. Blakey. Yeah, so Bedard is a dash 37. Yeah. And I get it. He's on the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blackhawks are basically an AHL team playing in the NHL. But I thought when I saw that, I saw someone post that on Twitter, and I was like, oh, whatever, he's on the Blackhawks. Then I looked deeper into it. He's got the second worst plus minus on his team. He's got th 31 of his 46 points have came at 5-on-5, five five, meaning he's been on the ice for 68 goals against in 51 games. Are we concerned? <laughs> Can you check? Are you, do you have the Blackhawks hockey reference up there? If, uh, if I'll go, pull it up. Go to yeah. that and just sort by um, time, on time on ice. Yeah, I just want to see how much he's playing. Uh, Knee jerk before that even comes up. I'm the biggest plus minus guy in the game. Yeah, we you all know that. I think what Blake's caveat of he plays for the Chicago Blackhawks is why I don't care. Yeah. To me, this is a uh, this was a free trial this season mm -hmm. for Bedard. No one expected them to do anything. They haven't done anything. He got a pretty gnarly injury that he's battled back from like a boss. I love him. I love the way he plays. Uh, I don't care about this. Yeah. Uh, truly, to me, this is a, a, an opportunity for Kyle Davidson and their coaching staff to see how he plays. And figure it out next year of what he needs to work on, how he can get even better. Um, so him being a dash, what was it? 37. Um, that's pretty gnarly, but uh, I, I really don't care. I think this team is so brutal. Um, yeah. Where is he? Seventh, seventh. right there. Yeah. Looks like he's seventh on the team in time on ice. So being second worst plus minus is yeah. not that crazy. And the highest uh, time on ice for forwards on the team. Yeah. And you know, with all those games missed. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, to me, man, they're, they're clearly just going, go out there and play hockey. Yep. I, I, I think he, I mean, you saw that, that peeper the other day where he, he's, or it wasn't even a power play, I don't think, but he was just stick handling through everyone from the point. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's playing pond hockey a mm -hmm. lot. Uh, and I, I, I give him, I give him that leash. I, I think I'm not going to look into this, but the one thing I will say is this. I said to you guys a long time ago that, Macklin Celebrini is going straight to this team, and wouldn't you know it, who is the first team eliminated yeah. from the playoffs officially? I'm weirdly rooting Chicago for it Lions. now. Like, I, I, it almost like in a masochistic way, I'm like, yeah, just fucking let him get both so I can bitch about it for the next 50 years. Listen, it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's Taves and Kane part two. It's yeah. What, I, what I've been saying the whole time. It's, I, I, I like the, the takes of Chicago after everything that went down. They don't deserve this. And I'll hear those, mm -hmm. but we're already here. Bedard's already on the team. So and he's money. <laughs> so an original six team with great history in a phenomenal city like Chicago, it's better if the Chicago Blackhawks are good. So if they go back to back years, number one overall pick and get Connor Bedard and Macklin Celebrini, you're not going to see me stamping my feet about yep. it. I think that's going to be pretty electric. And I wonder what type of free agents that attracts. Yeah. I mean, the the Sharks roster, after that hurdle trade and the Couture injury, they're starting to look... Yeah, they'll make a bid for it, they're, eh? They're yeah. looking pretty similar to yep. this, this oh, yeah. caliber of uh, oh, yeah. roster. So the see where he goes. One only minor concern I have is... Because we even when before the season we were talking to Chelios about Bedard, and it's like, I hope they give him the leash. And they certainly have, and mm. he's been awesome and so fun to watch. And all the great goal scorers in the league, as Chelios says all the time... 
take ch- cheat, take chances, anticipate, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it. So I'm I'm glad he has experienced life in the NHL doing that, seeing results. One thing I would like to keep an eye on moving forward, because like if he comes into the 2011 Boston Bruins with Claude Julian, he barely sees the ice. Yeah. And Julian's like, well, your defensive game isn't there. And that's not even a knock on Claude. He's a great coach. But like, that's what would have happened, <laughs> yeah, right? In no, a different system. But I'm sure Sagan would even admit now I learned some good lessons from that. It was too far. Like, that's too far pendulum yeah. for me. So I'll just be curious to see as Bedard, as this team gets better, I'll be interested to watch his plus minus. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, dude, are you ob- oblivious in the D zone because you never learned it early? So keep an eye on it. My last comment on him is there's a lot of fans freaking out about whenever he gets hit or or wrapped up. Like he took a little slash to the wrist a couple weeks ago. I think it was Dumba buried him into the boards the other day. Um, Our boy Heat Daddy on Twitter got loud about it. And there was that unbelievable Darren McCarty moment. Uh, Did you guys see that? Oh, yeah. What was this? This was unbelievable. Let me find it. So our boy Heat Daddy on Twitter was people were freaking out about um, this hit that Bedard took, and our boy Heat ta- Daddy said, "Bro, now I'm getting a little fed up. This is hockey. You got to have your head up and protect yourself. What is going on anymore? Simply don't be defenseless. Then this is hockey." And Darren McCarty, iconic multiple <laughs> cup winner, goes, "Rule number one: get out of the way. Rule number two: if you're going to get hit, get up against the wall boards." Two feet is off. Two feet off is death, like uh, uh, skull emoji. This used to be common knowledge. So did skating through neutral zone with head down and get blown up. Defenseless is football, not hockey. Then some dude, I'm not going to yeah. <laughs> expose him, goes, all caps, false. Like replies to this. This is a reply yeah. to Darren McCarty. <laughs> false. Not sure if you've ever played the game, but those of... <laughs> Those of who, sorry, this guy, terrible, false, not sure if you've ever played the game, but those of who have played at a high level know that the best way to maintain possession is to turn your back to the other player and hopefully draw a penalty. Go back to your video games. And Darren McCarty (laughs) quote tweets that and goes, this might be my favorite response ever. Feel free to play my guy in any of these video games you speak of. I'll be here shining rings, hashtag four cups. And I quote tweeted that and said, this might be the biggest body bag in the history of this app. And then that guy replies to that tweet and goes, fair enough, Daryl. <laughs> Wrong name. But my point stands. The game has changed a lot since you last played. I have a deep understanding of the modern game as I've been coached by guys who played in the, in the O in 2005 to 2010 era. And I'm like, buddy, you cannot double down on a multiple cup winning NHL Insane. legend, I would say. But he's been coached by OHL guy. Yeah, yeah. You know? exactly. That guy who went to OHL camp, you know. Sorry that went on so long. My my point is Bedard isn't bitching about this stuff. Yeah. So all the fans stop bitching. Chill out. Bedard is playing the game the right way. He knows he's gonna get his licks. He knows he needs to learn how to take contact in the NHL. It's it's I just find it so weird. Because we didn't get this with Crosby and, and McKinnon and McDavid. It's like when they got bodied in their first year, no one was literally crying about it. Yeah. And it's just all season been this way with Bedard. It's like whenever he gets hit, people are like, dude. Protect Connor. Jesus Christ, man. Like guys are just going at him. I'm like, no shit they're going at him. He's their best player. He's, and he's playing pond he's dangerous out there. too. He's got yeah. his head down. So yeah. crazy. <laughs> all right. Next thing I want to talk about our boy Flip Kessel shockingly, in my pour, opinion. Pour one out for Phil. Was not signed by the Pour Canucks. one out for Phil. Because now, if he gets signed, he's ineligible for playoffs. Al, the GM, Alvin, had this say. I just want to read you this quote. Phil is a great person and well-respected player. What he has done in this league, a three-time cup winner, he wanted to come back and play. With roster complications and how we want to play, unfortunately, at this point, it wasn't a fit for us. In order to facilitate a trade for us, we needed to move a player out to get a player in. So, obviously, that's a tougher situation. So... I, we had Wish on. He said he was pretty sure the Canucks were going to sign him. It's, we all, I feel like, thought the Canucks were going to sign him. What, can you, can you pull up, um, just NHL.com goals for where the Canucks are in that? Um, I, I'm going to jump ahead of that. I don't even care what that yep. is. Phil's not helping them that much, dude. Uh, uh, do I think if Phil got a full 82 games, I think Phil would be able to get, you know, 15 goals. Yep. And that's great. Any, any team could use 15 goals, you would say. 
But, you know, we see it right there. The Canucks are third in the league in goals yep. for. They're not desperate for Phil to bag them a few more on the third line. I was surprised when he got a tryout. Yeah. Um, no offense to Phil. It's just he's older. He's an older guy. He's he's. I don't know if he's in playing shape, but I was surprised when this happened. I like the team. Obviously, the coaching staff, it, there's a ton of connection there with Likes Phil. Likes him. Yeah. They love him. He's one of the great locker room guys ever. And yeah, when we talked to Wish, we were like, hell yeah. Any team would love Phil. But the Canucks made good moves. They've got a, a, a full roster. They don't need Phil. And I am bummed with the rule. I'm bummed that if he yeah, gets yeah, signed yeah. by yeah, somebody, same. he can't play in the playoffs. So it doesn't really give any team incentive to sign him. So his se- his season is over. If mm-hmm. you could put him on any current playoff team and this f- rule, like let's say it doesn't matter, would you? what team would you put him on? I would put him on Boston. I'm not kidding. Uh, that would be so legendary. I just think if there's a team that needs more goals, it's Boston. Uh, I think Phil could probably be a bumper on the power play still. Yeah. That's something that Boston definitely needs. I know they're what are where are they right there? They're uh, six in the league in goals for. Yeah. So you know they're not struggling, but they're they're tied with Edmonton. Detroit is one behind them. Florida's a few behind them. So they're not lighting it up this year, but. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a playoff team that, to me, I'm like, I could see that. I don't think that they need him. It's no, no, no. Why, why they didn't sign him. Yeah. But that's one that I could totally see. But, yeah, I was surprised Phil got a tryout. I'm not shocked by this. I am saddened by this. We yeah. love Phil. We want to see Phil in it. But I won't lie, when he got the tryout, there was part of me that was like, I, do you need this, Vancouver? So as the days went by, the weeks went by, and we didn't see – a signing, I was like, okay, yep, this is this is over. Uh, to answer your question, I would say o- the Oilers, um, for a couple reasons. One, you can't have him and Perry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can, no, dude. You can. Well, that's why, because he, you got, you got Perry, and you got f-ing Captain McDavid, Sean, Yonner McDavid. I, I would be <laughs> nice to have Phil in the locker room, just loosening the boys up for a little bit. And I would have picked a team. Boston kind of has become this now, but a team that doesn't have a lot of playoff success experience, like. You guys lose all the time, Edmonton. What's up? Here's yeah. how you win a cup. I'm around. And here was my only point where I'm kind of, well, I'm disappointed because I'm a fan of Phil, but disappointed from a hockey sense. I think, sorry for the crossover, but you know when you play fantasy football, it's not really worth having guys on your bench that are like just worse than your starters because they're yeah. never going to play. It's better to just stash like a total game breaker. Like if yeah. your running back gets hurt, you've got this guy. Oh, I like it. Vancouver's argument per, per Alvin's comments is like, well, we just, we have some depth guys are young depth guys already that we like. And I'm like, I just don't know that that guy is going to break a playoff game ever. Yeah. And Phil might, and Phil might not ever too, but I'm just like, I might've, if someone went down, I'd rather just have Phil in my back pocket. And that might be a result of, we don't, like I said, we don't know. Maybe, maybe he was brutal. Yeah. (laughs) He he just might not be. And you know, maybe he's banged up. Who knows? But, um, I was just thinking to myself when we're talking about teams, how how funny would it he be on Colorado with Nate Dogg? Yeah, there, I just can't think of two people whose preparation and diet is different. Um, <laughs> s- similar thing with diet. Uh, Bedard always talks about how he's never had fast food, doesn't drink soda, anything like that. I uh, part of me wants Kyle Davidson to sign him. Yeah, just to be like this, finish up. Like they've got no one on their. They're roster. doing that already. Top like it'd picks. be a cool like, hey, here's a three time Cup winner, Connor. Learn some things from Phil. Yeah, let Phil get some more games in. That would that would be interesting. Here's be cool. a here's an NHL player to play with. For they got all the cap space in the world. Couldn't hurt him. Why not? Just sick. just let let Phil suit up, dude. Play third line for the Blackhawks. That'd be a blast. Love to see it. Okay, next one I got. This can be quick, but I just wanted to call out the goaltending situation in Florida right now. Yeah, I don't think enough people are aware of this. Um, Bob has become the best goalie in the league. You know, like it's it started in the playoffs last year beginning of this year they were pretty good but now he's just like completely dialed yeah you know you would look at the goals against in the league and it was always like sway was way up there demko was way up there it's bob now and he's coming for that ass florida the just a quick pause yeah what a wild situation that is he just decided yeah. to wake up last year after th- after what three games of the first round yeah well he was Bobrovsky went like this you know what dude why am I sucking? Yeah. I, sh- I should just be good again. I should be the $10 million goalie that yeah. they signed me for. And he, since that moment, has been this good. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So Florida this year is ninth in goals. Four. Four. 
And I'm pretty sure last year it was like the same Boston, Buffalo, and Florida were like yeah. right there, top three. That's what we were talking about when they were trying to sneak into the playoffs. Yep. It was kind of like what Pitt's doing this year. Where yeah, it's yeah. Like, How aren't you good right, right. now? Yeah. So Matthew Kachuk has picked it way up way like up. we said he would. But admittedly, if you're a Florida fan, Sam Reiner has been a bit of a special teams merchant. He leads the league in power play goals by 10 over the next guy. He does have the most shorties, which is also lit. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Special teams wizard. Yeah. Can I say something to the two of you? Rangers fans get big on this on Kreider with power play goals. And there's a lot of people mm-hmm. who, when talking about Reinhardt's, what does he have now? 45 goals. They're like five on the peak. They're like this half, more than half are on the power play. I don't get the issue with that. We need power play goals. I don't yeah. give a shit where your goals are. If you have 45 goals, that is a lot of goals, Pretty people. Sick. And yeah. I don't care if 25 of them are on the power play. I've never understood. I under, I get 5v5 is incredibly important, but so is power play. Do, I would, think the argument just comes to that play, power plays are less 100%. often in the playoffs. Yep. And But then it's like those are still – you're still going to get a few, and those still yes. become even more important. So then it becomes more important that you have, have a guy. goal scorer yep. that can score yeah. in those – so you only get one to two opportunities yeah. on average in a playoff game. Now his value just gets even higher. And and I think my my biggest data point for my argument is people, let's go back to Kreider again, right? People go, oh, well, there's not as many power plays. And I'm like this, yeah, well, let's think about it like this. There are power plays in the regular season games. Mm-hmm. So you need a guy like Chris Kreider, like Sam Reiner, who's going to score on said power plays. When you take those power plays away, that is less time in the regular season games that have power plays where they score that they might score 5v5, and I think Kreider's stats in the playoffs in his entire career show that. Yeah, He yeah. still scores in the playoffs, and I think so will Rhino. So Me too. I, 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 I just wanted to quickly say... No, I love that. I've never understood... While I get the 5v5 is important, it's funny how people go like this. They're all power play goals, dude. They don't count. And I'm like, well, they sure do. They sure do, and we <laughs> so, need them badly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So all that's to say, power plays will tighten up a little bit. And they're only ninth in the league anyway. Yeah. It's not they're not gonna win this year because they're gonna outscore everybody. They are gonna win this year because goals against they are first in the tied with the Jets coming into today, yeah. I think, but by like twenty goals. Like they do not get scored on. And a ton of that is Bob, right? But dude, if you look at goals against but in also, the league, number two right now is Bob, two point two nine. Number one at two point oh two, Anthony Stolars in the backup role. And let me hit you with this, dude, for his career, bro, because he's thirty. I know. I was like, how old is this kid? He's 30 years old. Philly, Edmonton, Anaheim for a long time. Never got 28 games in the 2021-22 season with the Ducks. Uh-huh. And that year, actually, 12-8-3, but the Ducks weren't that good. But 9-1-7, save percentage, 2-6-3 goals against. But other than that, not very impressive numbers his whole yep. career. He's got a few, like, if you look at his stats, it's sick because he played, like, one game or something, yep. you know? This year, 21 games so far. 13 and 5 with a 925 save percentage tops in the league right now 202 goals against mm. tops in the league right now. I'm not saying Florida's going to give Stolarz the net in the playoffs, but I am saying this. Last year, the Panthers lost. They were probably going to lose to Vegas anyway, but they lost cuz they were too hurt for sure, but Bob slowed down in the finals a little bit. And this year, Bob's in the nets from game 1. If they go up 3-0 against Detroit or whoever, Stolarz can get a couple games here. To keep Bob fresh. I, I don't know if they will. I'm yeah. just saying you have a guy, and I think the league should move to this. That it's like the older goalies, they don't need to. I mean, I guess if they're sweeping everybody, he's getting some time off anyway. But you know what I'm saying? If they have comfortable leads, even if you dump a game to Detroit in Detroit because Stolarz plays, I'm like, yeah, whatever, dude. You're gonna you're gonna win. So I will be interested to see how they handle the goalie situation. What a luxury to be playing the defense that Florida's playing and to have Stolarz playing the way he is backing him up. It's amazing. Stoli's been lights out, and we know how valuable that is for a team. I just we've talked about a lot the the tandem situation in the playoffs and. We go back to last year, Boston, Florida. Boston goes up 3-1. That was the and and Olmark was hurt. That was the most obvious. Mind blowing. Put Swayman in, you idiots. And I think that, that will haunt them and that coaching staff for the rest of their fucking lives. But I still don't know where I stand on the tandem thing. Because well, let's say this. Let's say you're Florida. Let's say you play Detroit or the Islanders in round one and you go up three nothing. Yep. And then you go like this, Stoli, you're in. Loss. And you go, whatever. Then you put in Bob. Win. You move on to the next round. Then say, let's say the next round, you go up 3-0. And you go like this. Stoli, you're in. Loss. Then you put Bob in. You win. 
I it gets to the point where I'm like, what are we doing? Because and I, I, that's a huge if. Yep. There's a chance that he just wins. My if is like the if this guy loses every time you put him in, it's destroying him mentally. Yeah. And I wonder if your players start being like this, bro. Fucking stop. Yep. Like I, this is an extra game that we're playing that I don't want to be playing. Mm -hmm. So it's just a it is that quick one. You know, if you pull if you put in your backup and you lose, it just opens the door to so much fan moron behavior. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, I agree with that. And we've talked to a lot of guys now because we're big on the tandem thing. We've talked to a lot of guys in the league. When we bring it up, they're like, absolutely. Yeah, they, they want the. No like, the I want to know who I'm playing in front of every night. I don't want it to switch. It's not the regular season. And that was interesting to hear. Yep. So you wonder with all those factors, does eventually one team just have the guts to go, I don't care. I don't care what the media and what the fans are going to say. This is our strategy. We're going to play both in situational times and we're doing it. And if we do see that, who is it going to be? Yeah. That's going to be very interesting. Just to wrap on this this discussion, I think it's really important to highlight the fact that with having a good backup, it allows you to not play Borowski around 60 starts for the regular yeah, season. Yeah, it's yep. huge. Last year he played 50 games, had the best season he's had since coming to Florida. Three out of the first four years were pretty much garbage. And, you know, he gets to the playoffs and he becomes goes on that heater. I think it's so valuable down the stretch here. I mean, they don't have first locked up. But whatsoever. they want it. But they want and it. And you have this luxury now. And you yeah. have this luxury that you can now play Stolars. You know, you could go, you could split the last, uh, I think they have 18 games left. You could split those last 18, or I think it's 17 games. Split those 50-50 so that by the time playoffs comes around, Bob is only around 52, 54 starts. He's fresh, ready to mm -hmm. go. I think uh, it's a huge luxury to have How many Stolars. games did he start last year? 50. 50. Man, with a lot of these teams, I think we... Uh, We've we've mentioned it before. It, the the two conferences feel flipped from last year. Yeah, it feels like the West is more of a bloodbath. I I almost think some of these teams should not relinquish first, but care less about first and care more about managing players and goaltenders. Yeah. Another example of Boston, dude. It's like I know there were very very unique and special circumstances with Bergie's dad being in Montreal to see his what was then last regular yep. season game, but game 82 of the season, Patrice Bergeron gets an injury and that destroyed everything. He got hurt in that last He got yes, hurt in the 82nd game of the season. That's why he missed the first, I think it was two oh, or three right. games of that series. And, that, you know, Boston won, I think. We lost the first game. No, 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 no. They won game one against Florida. Then we lost game two. We, we lost We lost a game. Yes, we did. Yeah. But I think, I'm not sure. Can you look that up, Like, I think they went up. It was, they certainly won game one. And then I think it, they he lost game two and then won game three and four. Yep. But uh, it might have been – no, I think that's what it was. But either way, you lost a game. And then the bigger thing was he then came in and was just hurt yep. still. So it's just a disaster. But, um, yeah, all very interesting. One game one, lost game two. Yeah, then one, won three, two in a row, then lost yeah, three the straight. The next three. Well, how many in a row did we lose after <laughs> Um, um, but yeah, I, I, my last point being, I, I, I wonder if some of these teams here are going to go, cause it's such a tight race. It's a tight race in a lot, you know, it's a tight race in, in, in the, in the Atlantic with Boston and Florida. It's not as tight with Carolina and New York, but in the West, it feels like the Pacific and the central are just so tight that I'm almost like you guys should worry about conserving your energy. Just to wrap. Colorado leading starts is Gorg Georgiev with 52. They it's don't have many, a good dude. backup. Yep. Like, and that is and too look at many. where they're going to be competing for home ice down the stretch here. Yep. I like everyone's saying they're a juggernaut, which I agree with, but I think that Achilles' heel is going to be the goaltending come round two, round Great. three, four. Dude, it is unacceptable for goalies to be playing 60 games in, in today's NHL, yeah. in my opinion. And I think Agreed. that's going to hurt Colorado for sure. Tough on the hips. Tough on the hips, baby. All right, let's talk Colorado because that's what I wanted to get into let's next. Talk Colorado. Uh, Landy 
could return for the playoffs. Let me hit you with the quote from Bednar. It's in the playoff time frame. He's not going to come back too early. It's just not going to happen. He has a timeline that says, you're not coming back before this date. Doesn't matter how good you feel, and we're sticking to that. It's his career, so we're not going to play with that regardless of where we're at in a playoff series. So that's number one. He will not come back before that date, and then he's got to get himself to the point, hopefully, that he can come back. We don't have clarity on that. So very vague, very, like, well, who knows? Maybe it's all smoke and mirrors. And it certainly doesn't sound like it's round one. But it would be really interesting if Colorado can get through the first round, which is going to be ultra competitive, by the way, oh, yeah. and I, then add Landy. I feel as though it's over. And that's what and Kipper that's told a, us. That's a I'm hedging my emotions because I love Landy so Me too. much. I love him like a, a family member. Yep. And I don't know why. But sometimes you just have those players. And Landy has always been that way for me. He... What really breaks my heart is he's he's struggled with injury his whole career, mm -hmm. but every time he's healthy, he performs. And these last couple of years, God, did he perform. Dude, and yeah, God, keep going. I have some cool stats. In those playoffs. And I just thought we were seeing the, the corner turn of him. We, we see it with a lot of guys. Um, Crosby struggled with some concussion stuff early on in his career. Bergeron struggled with, with concussion stuff. And... I thought we saw Landy battle through the injury-prone days of his career, and we were going to watch him ride out these next six to seven years of him figuring out his body, figuring mm -hmm. out his game, and just being this gamer that he was these last couple of seasons. And to see that he's, he had, what what was it, two knee surgeries in, in 13 months or something like that? It might have mm -hmm. been less. I think, it, yeah, so he went through that 2020 playoff run with pretty much bone on bone in that one knee. Yes. And then got it operated and then missed that season and then got another one. Got it operated again, yeah. right? I, had quad yeah. surgery in 2020 and knee surgery twice. In 2022. In March 2022 and October 2022. Yeah. A quad surgery yeah, so on top was, of that? It was yeah. even less, dude. It was, it was like in a, a matter of seven to eight months he had yep. two, two knee surgeries and it's a cartilage replacement surgery oh yeah for those this is know. the last shot i that, think yep. of him, oh my gosh you know, resalvaging that hasn't career. played since june 26th yeah when he had an assist in the 2-1 victory to win the cup in his june 26th of 20, 2022 yes like the, the, this was not last year he has missed so much time in his he's in his um he hasn't played more than 54 games in an nhl season since 2018 in his last season, he had 30 tucks in 51 games, and he has 67 playoff points in 69 playoff games. I mean, he's a gamer. Yeah. You want the guy on the ice, dude. So to me, I just think what makes me nervous is we're three months away here from him not having played in the NHL in two years. I think I'm nervous that with that much time, we would have known by now. The fact that even still right now, there's st like Bednar's being like, yeah, like, you know, we're, we're monitoring it. Like, I think after two years and his last surgery was October 2022. Yeah. So like that is. And they said 12 months. Yeah. And that's well over a year since then. I just think we would know by now. I and, hear that, and, but I can't believe they brought it up, though. Like, it, I, I'm surprised there was a headline that was like, Landy might be back for the playoffs. Because like, I the think fact that that was said makes me think it's even possible. Uh, well, I think they're doing this. He's 31, 32. I think he's going like this. Just give me a shot. Let yeah. me try. And I think he's going to Tuka Rask himself and try to just jump on the ice until the wheels fall off. And the wheels might fall off immediately. Yep. And I think Colorado is going, they have team doctors. They have people assessing him on the ice when he's skating. And I think they're probably going, dude, it's like you're done. Yep. And it's him being like, no, I'm not done. Give me one more shot. I think that's why they're keeping the door open. But I think... Also, ownership is going to want him to at least give it another go. I yeah. mean, he got the bag uh, right at the perfect time. Yeah, he did. <laughs> right at the perfect time. And good and for him. Yeah, good for him. Good he, for him. Well Thank deserved. Him. Yep. Well yeah. deserved. And I'm sure ownership you know, would give him that contract again yeah. for everything he's provided for the team, let alone the Stanley Cup. Do you know so how fast I would pull this move? I, I think I might have talked about this before on the pod, or at least maybe to you in person. If I were the Colorado Avalanche organization and landy was dealing with this look at his contract blakey what is he making and for how much longer so seven mil for another after this season one two three four five years okay so up until 2029 he's yeah. making that seven mil yeah if i were the colorado avalanche organization and landy's just done i would go like this dude retire you can't play yep and he goes like this i retire 
and that money comes off the books. And then I would, in the same moment, slide him a new document that is a contract to be on the coaching staff making seven mil a year. That must be illegal, <laughs> but I don't know. part of me is like, why is it illegal? They can pay someone any amount of money they want as far as the front office staff, right? Like that doesn't matter. And I would just, like, why, why wouldn't you do that? It's coming out of the same pool. Yep. Honor well, the guy and go like this. You can't play anymore. It's not like he just stinks now. His body has broken down. And I would look at him and go like this. You love this team. We love you. You literally can't play. Do you want to cap? Do you want to hamstring us on the cap for the next, what, what is it? F f five five years. years? Or let's do this deal. Yep. I do it. Well, I think he's, I think he can play. But if he couldn't play, I would do it. That yes. Yeah. I hope he can play. If yep. he can't, do that. Hire I him think as a coach. You think so? You guys don't think we see him this year? I uh, I I am not getting my hopes up because I love him so much. But I would love it more than anything. I'm not saying like you're done, dude. I'm saying it's just all the signs are pointing to me being devastated. Yeah, I I think it's. I think if they make it through that first round, he's going to get even more energized mm -hmm. and more you know motivated to to come back. I think we do see him. I just don't know what the quality of player yeah. we're going to be getting. Like, Fair. is he still going to be that top six no. uh, power forward that we, we once saw? I think we don't see him, but only because they lose in the first round. But I think we would have seen him, and he will play next year. Gotcha. Last thing I want to say about the Avs, Nate Dogg is on a heater, dude. 13 points in his last five games. His home point streak is like a billion games in a row or some shit. He... I, I thought we had that MVP talk at the midway point, and I was like, uh, I think it could be. I think you picked Nate. I think mm -hmm. it could have been Nate anyway, but I didn't think he would catch Cooch points wise. And Cooch could go on a heater and catch him right back. But just the, I swear to God, I did a post that was like, Cooch first to 100, and here comes McDavid. You know, like it's going to be McDavid and Kucherov down the stretch here. And I blinked, and Nate Doc has the most points in the yeah. league. And I was like, yo. I mean, I said it months and months ago with Chelly. When Nate Dog's playing like this, I think he's the best player on earth. Uh, and I still hear, I resisted it for a long time, but I do hear the arg arguments for McDavid. I don't want McDavid to win the heart because I want it, I want different stuff. Yep. But yeah. <laughs> he's, he's going to be is like a, a handful of points behind them. I know. And, yeah. Like and and moronic. just like given where they were to where they are now, it's, uh, it's hard not to say he's obviously the most valuable player. Yeah. But Nate Dogg. I think, think Colorado's dealt with a lot too. Like Landy's out. Yep. Nishushkin's been out a ton. I think Nate, I mean, Nate is the heart for me. I said it a while yep. ago. And I stand by, he is the best player in the league right now. Yeah. It's, so it's a 12 game point streak, 25 points in the last 12 games. It's absurd. Is that good? Yeah. Is that all right? Uh, Pretty sure. That's okay. <laughs> Let's get into some Vegas talk. Yeah. I want to say this. I want to give you a, a runway here, but I want to say first, because we're talking long term IR because that's all the chatter after that trade mm -hmm. deadline extravaganza. Mm -hmm. I want to say first and foremost, Mark Stone is badly hurt and might not come back at all. His spleen is lacerated. It's impossible to tell because it's an internal organ that you can only monitor via CT scans. You're not like with your physical therapist being like, how's my ankle feel? Mm -hmm. He's badly hurt. And again, I'm, I'm going to give you most of the talking points here, but I just want people that are bitching to know that because I feel like a lot of people are like, dude, they're just stashing him. He's fine. And I'm like, no. well, he's not fine at all. And he might be so hurt that it costs them everything this year. Yeah. And there's a lot of people going, oh, well, it's three years in a row. Mark Stone's been hurt at the end of the year. Coincidence. And to that, I say Mark Stone is a really intense power forward who puts his body on the line every day. He's not that young. And yeah, it's I don't think it's a coincidence that at the end of an 82 game season, <laughs> he hurt. has knocks like what I, we're talking about. Okay, so. Yeah, he's a very, you know, tough player, goes, you know, does a lot on the ice that puts his body at harm. Yes, he gets injured three years in a row, but it's the timing. <laughs> okay, we got a, we got a, we got a truther in here. Yeah. Like, I think he's always hurt. Mm -hmm. That's my thing is he's like the guy is just always going to be banged up. He could he's go always, on IR at any moment. During exactly. Yeah. yeah. He could go on IR at any moment. Like, why? Did they, I think they conveniently, they knew he probably had a spleen issue, and they're like, okay, around this time, we're going to announce the injury. Then yep. here you're going to get your surgery. And I mean, it's playing to the rules still. Okay. Yeah, this but, is what I want to go off on. And it's it's bending them in the in you know the ways that can benefit you uh, to you know to the max uh, ability. But 
I do think it is weird with the timing <laughs> year after year that this guy is going in for surgery. Now, don't get me wrong. I agree. He is very hurt, but it's the timing. Yep. Well, okay. the timing makes perfect sense because it's smart. Uh, yeah. Why wouldn't you? Every platform we have, I won't take too long on this, but dude, if you have a problem with this, take it up with the league. Yeah. Shut up. Every single fan, I don't care who you root for, if you are pissing and moaning on a social media platform, you've got a big dump in your pants because all Vegas is doing is seeing a loophole and taking advantage of it like other teams won't. And that's why Vegas is competitive every single year. And I am just sick and tired of hearing people calling them cheaters. It's honestly like the Patriot stuff, dude. Mm -hmm. It's like they're smarter than you. Yeah. They have read the rule book more thoroughly than your team has. They are have the guts to go, we're going to trade everything we have as if there's no next season because we want a cup. Yep. And that's how they stay competitive, and that's why they're in the mix every season. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that based on how the rules are now. If you want the rules to change, fine. I have yeah. no problem with that. But stop blaming Vegas. They are just being smart and aggressive, and that is entertaining. So... Enough. And, dude, I'm sick of this shit. You say this all the time. They're like, the the Lightning stashed Kucherov all year, and then they just get to add him over the cap, and of course they win the cup. And I go, the Lightning made the playoffs without their best player. Yes. Thank you very much. Vegas right now is a fucking wild card team. Yes. If they hang on without Mark Stone and make the playoffs... Then good on them. Yep. And then sweet, because the rules are the way are, they get to add them. People act like they can stash all these guys and you automatically get a playoff bid. No, the other guys have to pick it up mm -hmm. and make the, make earn a spot in mm -hmm. the dance, dude. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge factor that everyone ignores, which is complete bullshit. I agree. And I, then I think it's super annoying. It's like, sorry to interrupt, yeah, you know. but I, I just, I find it so annoying when people you know, say they're cheating and they're seeing their players out. This team is like needs to make the yeah. playoffs. Do you think they don't want Mark They'd Stone love Mark and Stone. Thomas Hurdle in the lineup? Of course they do. Shut up. If you're good enough to get into the playoffs with missing players and then you get to add them during playoffs and win, that is smart, effective, and impressive hockey, sir. And say what you think should happen with like the you need to be cap ready at the playoffs like if you're if you're on long term IR day 1 of the playoffs you're out for the whole playoffs no matter what i don't know how i feel about that i i my thing is there's people who suggest the rule that if you're not on the roster at 82 yeah then you need to miss the first round or something mm -hmm. like that while i see that as an adequate rule to combat people doing this it is brutally harsh in the very real circumstances you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. If there's a player who's like dude i battled for fucking 57 games and i broke my ankle and now the timeline of my return looks like it's going to be you know a day before yeah i think that is okay it, it's it's like no dude it's bullshit to penalize a team for that and what people would say is like, well, if it looks like you're going to be ready a day before, activate them at 82. And it's like, well, no, because maybe that 80, 82nd game is incredibly important for my team. Mm -hmm. Maybe I need that game to win the playoffs. I'm not going to activate a guy who can't suit up because I'm worried about the penalty. That's why it hasn't been enacted yet. Yeah. Because there are many, if not all, many, circumstances where these guys are on LTIR and they need the, the rest yeah. of the season and into the postseason. So I don't think you can do that. I think it would actually f over a lot. And I don't, I, I want to be clear, fuck over a lot of teams, yes, but more so a lot of players. Mm -hmm. And I think that's dog shit. These guys put like their that. bodies on the line. And if there's someone who has a serious injury and they're set to come back game two of the playoffs, but we're going to go, uh, no, nah, you were worried about a technicality because people are pissing and moaning about it. You have to miss the entire first round. What if that's someone's last playoff? Yeah. What if so that happened a, to Bergeron? What if Bergeron got yep. dummied and couldn't play in the playoffs of his last season in the NHL? Do you feel good about that rule now? I don't think so. Let me ask you this then. For the people that are going, that you're saying, take it up with the league. And they go, okay, I will. What is the solve? Is it, dude, this is the rule and every team should be just fucking stashing a dude and whatever, <laughs> which I think is kind of gnarly where it's like, okay, once we hit trade deadline, just start stashing guys and then trade wherever you want and then we'll all the cap come the playoffs or is it like okay the playoff cap goes up a little bit and then you have to reset to the start of next year you can do that or is it like you can 
you can stash a dude, trade for whoever you want, but once playoffs start, whenever this guy's activated, yeah. and I don't care when, someone has to be deactivated. Like you have to yeah, yeah. be under a number, dude. Like we all, because right now there is no level anything. Yeah, because like Vegas could spend a billion more, and Tampa could spend this. You like, what is the answer? My, an I have zero problem with what's going on. Okay, I think it's fucking awesome, and I'll give you my like clean reason why. Everyone can do it, and it's not like there are players like Tomas Hurdle sitting on a scrap heap that they're signing for nothing. You have no, to yeah. trade stuff. People are acting like Vegas yeah. is getting these guys for free. They're trading tons of, of picks assets yeah. and assets and players to make this work. They're getting crafty. They're taking risks. Like, dude, you, you've all heard of risk reward. They are taking the risk to get a reward and credit to them for being willing to do that. Yeah. Every team can do that. So I don't get why we need to change it because it's one of these things where I'm like, dude, who gives a shit? If a team's willing to trade the next five years of their first round picks to load up and stash players and still be good enough to make it into the playoffs and then activate their roster in playoffs, good on them. Yeah. They were willing to give it a shot, just like every team has the opportunity to do. The one thing I will say is, for me, a very simple thing is just put a put an LTIR cap. If okay. I think I think you go like this. Can you find tell, tell me right now what Vegas's cap is when everyone is healthy? Projected cap hit. So this is going off uh cap friendly right now. Yeah, yeah. 92 million is what it says, but I believe that is incorrect because I believe well, so their cap on long-term IR is 15.9 million. Uh and then then you throw in their, you know, their full cap usage of 82. Yeah. Is um, that what the cap is right now? Or, it's 84? not 87? No, it goes to 87 next. That's right. That's right. That's right. I think it's right now it's 82.5. Let's call it 82. Yeah. So the cap's 82, and it's saying that they're 92. They're at 92 with 15 so more 15, on long-term IR. 15.9 million on, on IR, on long-term IR. On IR, they so, have 13.9 million. So my, But I think that cap counts towards yeah. the cap. Yes. And that's that's in like the, the 92 number, right? Yeah. Yeah. So my thing is- Make another cap of L, like yeah. LTIR cap is 118 yeah. or, or something like yeah, that. Yeah. So it's like, listen, if you can maneuver, if you're willing to trade big pieces and get guys on your roster while people are buried in LTIR and then come playoff times, they're here. That's fine. If you're willing to do that, you're willing to trade that stuff and you can still make it into the playoffs, missing some of your best players. Good for you. But there is a secondary LTIR cap in playoffs mm -hmm. of like 118. Yep. Because then you can't go like this. We're, we're going to just get everybody. That is my solve, yeah. and I think it's totally fine. Would you be bummed if, God, and I take a team like Boston, it, Toronto's right up against the cap too, right? Yeah. Take a team like Boston like everyone this year, Vegas. Toronto this year, where you're like, uh, maybe they're not even good enough, but they're like, oh, we're not quite cup yeah. contender. Oh, we're not quite cup contender. If they went, yo, Marshy, just, we can't afford like we need we need another piece, yeah. but we can't afford it because we're up against the cap this year. Can you just sit out the last twenty games so we can trade and acquire uh, Gensel, and then you just come back for playoffs because you're a vet. You don't need these last mm -hmm. twenty games. And he would go, F yeah, dude. Would you be bummed if the league gets to that point where pretty much every team does this every deadline? I'm not saying we can't. We get Gensel for free. We trade shit, but it's like every year at the trade deadline, a huge money player just sits out for the last twenty games because we're trying to get better. Me personally, no. I, I, and I get yeah. it's not. Oh yeah, it's, <laughs> get, it's not in the spirit. Yeah, but it's chess, dude. How do you not respect that? I, oh, I respect it now. I'm just saying I want it. I don't want to ever get there. Yeah. Like we are done right now to do your Patriots thing. We are right now in like the illegal lineman thing. Yeah, yeah. And the league was like, great chess move. Let's not do that anymore. Yeah, yeah. I Listen, want the league to go, good chess move. We should stop doing this. I, I think rules are meant to be bent so you can find the best edge to win, dude. Like it's just, it's competitive. Like you're being competitive if you do that. Yep. I think it, it it's chess. It's tactical. It's sick agree and, agree now and every team is not gonna have guys like that because there's guys with incentives with game incentives there's guys who care about their stats yeah uh, not in a selfish way no but, but like, i hear you dude i i mean i think that there's a very reasonable thing if a guy's fully healthy and the team comes up to him and goes hey set out the next 20 they're like no dude i like i'm playing great i don't yeah, want to yeah. set out 20 games and then come into playoffs and be like oh i haven't played in a month and a half so i think that's a factor too but if you've got guys who are 
confident in themselves because that's a risk too. Yeah, hell yeah. I, it's just, I love it, dude. I think it's, and, and leave it. People, might, okay, leave people it. might jump on me and say like, this isn't in the spirit of the game. You're not a true hockey fan. And f you, if you think that, because I don't think that's the case at all. I think it's fucking sick. It's chess. I'll tell you what, if Vegas wins the cup this year, there'll be some there'll fires. Be some, there'll be some changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, squad, we're taking a quick break to talk about factor. I don't know about the rest of you, but I love food. I hope and imagine you do too. And here's the thing, I also love cooking, but the reality is sometimes I'm way too busy, I've got too much going on, and when I get home, I just wanna be able to eat something delicious right away without the fuss of cooking, getting in the kitchen, making a huge mess, having to go to the store, buy a bunch of things, and that's where Factor comes in and saves the day. Factor is hooking us up with unbelievable, dietitian approved pre-made, chef-crafted, delicious meals. They take two minutes to cook and they've got you covered everywhere. They're calorie smart, they're protein plus, they're keto. They've got a huge variety of over 35 different meals and everything tastes like it's restaurant quality. It's the best thing in the world. And the best part is you can make it however you want it. You can get as many or as little as you want based on how often you think you're going to use it. And it's just the easiest thing in the world. You pop these things in the microwave, in the oven, whatever you got to do. Two minutes, in and out, bang, you're eating. No cleanup, no mess, no nothing. And the best part is every single one of these meals is absolutely delicious. Factor is getting you ready to rock whenever you need a meal that tastes delicious and doesn't take too much time. Check it out. Make it your own. Enjoy. Perfect segue into hot ice this week. Trade deadline is over. Dan and I have our report cards out. Yep. And we are going to be grading teams that I think worth are worth talking about. Yep. <laughs> so um, let's get right into it. Letter grades. You don't want to do every team. You just want to do some. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some teams, and I've identified the ones I think are worth talking about. I love that. I'll follow your lead. Okay. The first team, and we're just going to go through by division. I'm not, no bias here. Yeah. First team, the Florida Panthers. Letter grade, Dan. Flat A. Flat A for me too. Yeah. Um, needed very little. We just talked about the goalie in the defense situation. Yeah, I almost want to change it to A. I'm going to say A plus. I, I'm dude, changing I, I actually, I'm changing mine. Because yeah. now that I think about it, I don't know that there's anything else I would have done. Me neither. And not only did they get, like the one thing you might be needed was like a little bit more scoring spark. And they got it. And they didn't even get it. They didn't go to a guy... Did I pitch Riley Smith? No, I pitched Riley Smith to Vegas, maybe. I think. Or, or no, no, I couldn't no, have. I pitched no. him to the Canucks, I think. Yeah, but yeah. they didn't even get a guy like Riley, who has done it mm. in the playoffs, but is like not a elite, elite scorer. They went and got a guy who can be a game breaker, mm -hmm. straight up. You got a guy who can change the fucking playoff Absolutely. game and didn't spend a ton on him. And he's going to be happy there because he he... Did he list that as a team he wanted to go to, or he waved something? Yeah, he has there? family there. He's yes, family there. That's what it was. I knew there was some connection. I think he's gonna. It's God. It's gonna be difficult for them, but I think he might resign there. That's what I'm saying. Like three points in his first game, and I know Lindholm did that too, and then kind of really cooled off. So we'll see. Yeah. But to me, dude, like, if I, if you were like God, look at who's available. Florida's not gonna break the bank, but like, look who's available. Who would you get? I'm like Vlad, and they're like. Ka-ching. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, dude. Three key things for me here with Florida. One, they did the old addition by addition move. <laughs> and I'm going to explain that right now. I said last week what they, if they can improve their top six and bump Cousins down, yep. they will have the best top six in the NHL. And boy, they did it. Boy, howdy, did they do it. They did it. They went and got bad Vlad. Looks unbelievable in that number 10 sweater. And what, what I mean by addition by addition is people looked at this team and they went, ah, they could improve on the top six and they could improve on the bottom six, honestly. Yeah. And what they did is they add Vlad to the top yep. six and now you have a guy like Nick Cousins playing on your fourth line. Yep. I mean, dude. Where he was born to play, L dude. Yeah, look <laughs> at the stats. Nick Cousins doesn't have great stats right now. I think he's got under maybe under 20 points on the season, but that's exactly what you want on a fourth line and the shit stir that he is. Yep. That is a perfect fourth line guy. He's quick. He's fast. He's good with his hands. He's good in corners. That's exactly the energy line, energy line type guy that you want. Yeah. Ten and then, points in fifty three games, just under a hundred hits in fifty three games. The, you know, that's a good fourth line guy. Yep. So I think that's an addition on that line. And then the bigger one for me, this obviously wasn't a deadline acquisition, but it was a deadline move. Extending Forsling eight yeah, years yeah, yeah. at the cap hit that they did. Are you kidding me, man? That is such a good contract. And that guy, I think Forsling is a true he's stud. Having an insane year. He is a true stud and he's even more underrated. We talk about Devon Taves on Colorado mm -hmm. and how 
understated his game is because what he does is plays a perfectly balanced game that allows Kale to be what Kale is. Yeah. I'm not saying Kale couldn't exist without Taves, but they they are additive to each mm -hmm. other. Uh, Forsling is, is another one of these under the radar guys that I'm just like, man, oh man, is he just phenomenal? He's playing up there with Ekblad. Ekblad has been so healthy. Oh, I don't even want. Don't to speak it. it. Don't say it. Yeah, I'm gonna say it very softly. No, he got injured. That, that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> He's been so healthy, and he just got a knock, but it doesn't look too severe. And I'm just praying it's a like, oh, little knock. You're out two weeks. And comes back because this poor man yeah. has been so injured for so many years now. And I just need this to be a, a very typical little knock. He's going to play, you know, 65 games on the season. And he's going to be fine come playoffs. Yep. But I I think A plus because goalie situation yeah, is yeah. perfect. Good. Their, their, their forward line's perfect. Uh, unbelievable. Boston Bruins, letter grade. You go first this time. F. Ooh. Flat F for me from Boston. Oh. I'll tell you why. One, um, I would have, we've said this many times, there's just no need to keep, um, I guess I don't want to blast anybody, but there's just no need to keep some of these expiring contracts around when they could have potentially brought back assets. Uh, maybe they tried and it didn't work. I'll, I'll touch on that in a second, mm -hmm. but there's just a lot of guys in this team that I'm like, in my opinion, this Boston team isn't really going anywhere this season for the playoffs begin begin the exodus while we can because mm -hmm. some of these guys had pretty good years get something back from them two truly truly despite all the history no offense to pat maroon but i just i don't need that more of that player on this team right now um and third and final thing the olmark trade was on the table in my opinion now i know that they tried and had at least a king's one if not a devil's one as well that he said no to miss me with the they tried don sweeney tried to trade those three draft picks in 2015 and mm. didn't that doesn't mean that draft wasn't a disaster it was mm. this trade deadline in my opinion boston had a lot of chances to move people out, get real stuff back to build towards a very promising next year and did none of it. I'm sure they tried. They didn't succeed. F. B plus. Ridiculous. B plus. Ridiculous. And I mean this very passionately. I've been saying for the entire season, the Bruins need to do nothing. And they more or less did nothing. Yeah, correct. And I'll, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, I... Hats off to Sweeney for exploring the the Olmark yep. trade. I, I said, I think one of the goalies should move, and Olmark made made a ton of sense. But you now go into the playoffs with the best goalie tandem in the NHL. I don't think it's even debatable. It's the best goalie tandem it's in the NHL. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know your consolation prize of not trading away uh, uh, Olmark is, is you have Olmark keeping, yeah, <laughs> and that trade's very much still on the table. Yeah, it'll summer. happen. There was nothing on the table for Boston, man. And and I know what you're saying. It's guys like JVR. It's guys like DeBrusque. It's guys like Shattenkirk. But if you trade those guys, you are, uh, and we, we have, we've said how far we think this team can go, you still need to fill those spots for the rest of the season mm -hmm. and the playoffs. And if you just traded those guys away for like, you know, JVR I think could have maybe fetched you a, maybe a second down, round like a, a second round pick i think jake could maybe get you a second round pick and and those would be helpful the but what a lot of people don't understand the boston bruins don't have a pick in this coming draft until round four that's why i wanted those guys out for assets but, but, but chris you're you're assuming they're gonna get you those dude if jvr got you a second round pick that a miracle yeah it, it would so it's probably a third yep. jake is probably a third and are you sitting there going like this? Yeah, we traded our second and third line wingers that we now need to replace with who? Because mm -hmm. cool. you're probably not getting a third round pick for JVR plus a guy that can yeah, play yeah. on your third line. So now you're bringing up AHL guys and you're the second place team in the Atlantic. That is a bad look. It's, and, it's and, bold, and, but that's what no, I wanted. No, it's, it's more than bold. <laughs> it's stupid. And the bigger thing is you're now going, oh, sick. Now we have two third round picks. What the f*** does that do for you? I was hoping for a second for Jake to be honest. Yeah, and I hear I was really hoping. And that would be great. But yeah. they, they don't have a pick until the fourth round. They also don't have a seventh round pick. And then the next year, they don't have a second or a fourth. So any big trade that Boston fans were hoping for, and I know you didn't yeah, want yeah. this, was going to cost stuff that you don't have. So I like that 
what they did was they get Maroon, who is their Lucic replacement. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a nothing. It's a wash yeah, yeah. to me. Uh, Maroon, awesome dude, multiple cup winner, energy guy, great, whatever. I love the peak trade. Oh, me too. I forgot about that, actually. I think F plus. I think it's another <laughs> nice F plus. I think it's another example of um, Don Sweeney getting away with murder with the 2015 mm-hmm. draft because now of your three 13, 14, 15 overall picks from the 2015 draft, you have one of them left and you've got like, who's going to walk for free now? Nothing in return. Yeah. yeah. And now, Jake, you lose for He's free. For free. But you've traded Zaboral and you've traded, uh, I believe it was a third round pick in 2026. For Andrew Peake, who I actually think is the exact type of third-pairing defenseman that I wanted this team to get, and they got a young one. Mm -hmm. He turns 26 later this month, I believe. I think he's got something like eight points this year. Everyone looks at that, and they're like, what the is that? But this guy is a defensive D-man. He's 6'3", 210. He's under contract on a very good cap hit at 2.7, 2.75 or something like that for the next two years. Yep. I think he has been buried in Columbus because they have a ton of defensemen and a ton of young defensemen. And with them being so bad, they're taking the opportunity to play all the young defensemen and he's been forced out and has been health bombed a lot. Yep. So I think the future is bright for Peak and they clearly like him because that's an investment. You don't trade a third in Zaboral for that guy with that much term unless you're going, we are relying we like on this. you to yep. be a player. So I really like that unexpected low-cost trade for them. And the bigger thing is they didn't do anything, dude. They weren't stupid. Mm-hmm. And I just love that move. So, so does Shattenkirk come out of the lineup for you to put in peak? I would. Um, actually, dude, personally, and this is harsh, I would I would dump Grizzlick. I think Grizzlick has just been so he was health bombed last year in the playoffs. I think Mason Lorai belongs straight on that first line on the left side of Charlie McAvoy. He's a left shot defenseman. He's exactly what McAvoy did with Chara when Chara when McAvoy came up. He was a rookie. You put him on the top line with your top line vet. That is your top D line vet in McAvoy. Let Lorai go up and play with him. Learn from him. Have the freedom to use his offensive skill set because you know you got a guy like McAvoy next to you. And then I would put Peak with Shattenkirk and I would scratch Grizzly. I think that's a really, really smart move. Next up, you're going first. The Maple Leafs. Uh e- D. I also have a D. Really? Another another depth D guy that's gonna solve all the problems in Toronto. Ridiculous yeah. decision making. Um, you've, you've been, you've driven that car already too. Like, I just can't believe that was the move. Yeah. Um, you know what? Are you, sorry, were you go. finished? I kind of think Montreal and tree living for the first time in many years went like this. We know what's happening here. Toronto. So, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I said what I say, Montreal. Yeah. yeah. My bad. I think Toronto went like this. We know what's happening. <laughs> Me too, dude. Like, because they're similar to Boston. They don't have a ton to work with. Like, yep. They've they've moved a lot of draft picks. They they are cap crunched to hell. Yep. I I really think that there was part of them that was like, we don't have a lot to work with. Uh, Labushkin, come on yep. over. Where you get you an A for me if you trade Marner for Soros. Soros and to win me, the cup. The, I can't and you get a D for me if think, you don't do that. I, 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 I've, I've been banging that drum this whole time, and I hope they do it this summer. I think I think Marner would flourish in Nashville. Yep. I think he would love Nashville, and I think uh, they need a goalie, uh, yep. and, and they can't have these fucking guys with all making all that money. Yep. I I was so underwhelmed with with the, uh, bummer, the deadline. Dude. I mean, the it what pissed me off the most was that Tampa got Matt Dumba for a fifth round pick. Yep. And we're trading for Joel Edmondson for a third and a fifth round pick and then Labushkin I think was also a third and like a sixth. Yep. It's it's just to me like those guys aren't moving the needle. Like I don't see those guys really making the impact that you need to yeah. win a playoff series, let alone win a like win the cup. Agree. Like, this roster and team is so underwhelming, and I the only way I see the Leafs making any noise in the playoffs is if they get a hot goalie like Wall or Samsonov just be, goes on a heater, and then their star players actually play like elite star. But players like really, playoffs. yeah, like really, carry really you. carry yep. you. Like yeah. it's just not looking good, and yep. we're probably gonna play the Bruins and, and lose. We're gonna get embarrassed again, and. <laughs> Swayman's gonna I, eat your fucking lunch I hate, again, and I'm just gonna hate hockey all yeah. off season. Yeah. And yeah, Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm really torn on this one. I'm going. I can go first. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm giving them a B. Okay. I was between B minus and C plus. Yeah. 
And I'll tell you, I wanted to go C plus because I really like the Duclair pickup. Actually, I think that's a great, that's a classic cup winning Tampa guy that they add where you're like, oh yeah. And then he just like does great playoff ad, but I know they really wanted help on the D with Sergey Hurt and they wanted Hannafin and it seemed like they were getting Hannafin. So I'm like, you didn't get that shit. So I'm giving you a C plus. And I actually don't love Dumba's game as much, yeah. not even as much Hamison, just like as much as like a playoff game breaker, but the value they got him for, I'm like, ah, okay. Yeah. I'll go bump you back up to B minus. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. I go B because I say, I, I think I'm being a very, I, I'm giving a lot of points for, uh, being realistic. Yeah, okay. And uh, I love the Duclair ad. I yeah. think, like you said, what a perfect type of guy oh, to just go in, in that organization, yep. play under Cooper. I love the Dumba ad because zero pressure on Dumba. Yep. Dumb, you, you get to play with some really elite players over there. I think it is a, a just a beautiful match. But the bigger thing for me is, dude, Tampa's done. They're not, they're not winning anything this year. They're not winning anything this year. Yeah. I have more confidence and, confidence and, in Tampa than like Toronto. Tampa could beat New yeah, York yeah, in the yeah. first round. Yeah, Same. I think they're I think they're they can win a first round matchup, but they're not winning a cup. And if Hannafin was gonna re sign and it looks like he's gonna re sign in Vegas. So yeah, you might hear oh, yeah. that by the end of the week. But if Hannafin was going to re sign, okay, awesome. Like that's a a good guy to get, but it was gonna cost you a first mm-hmm. and I, I I don't see it with Tampa. I, I think that we are staring down the barrel of a very real possibility that Steve Samkos is leaving for free this summer, which is insane Chaos. to me. And yes, they have point. Yes, they have Cooch. Cooch is arguably the best player in the league. But after that, I think they're a bit thin. I think they've played a bit thin all year. I don't think losing a first round pick for a guy like Hannafin was going to win you a cup or even maybe get you to the Eastern Conference Finals. So yep. I, they think they're realistic, and I like that. Detroit Red Wings. Um. A C minus for me. D for yeah. me. Uh, again, being realistic, I think that Detroit getting into the playoffs is is a is a huge win. It's yeah, a, that is their victory. They are so much better than everyone expected, except me. And uh, Kane was their ad. Yep. They went and got Kane, and that was a big ad. Oh yeah. Um, this five game losing streak is a is a just a disaster it's a, <laughs> it's a free fall and good god they need to pull up because what's unfortunate now dude is with the way they were playing and with with adding kane they like almost have to make playoffs now yeah oh buddy a hundred percent but i'm glad that stevie y didn't panic in me the too of this losing streak and being like oh my god yep because larkin will be back in a few games i think they need to get in my opinion in the next three they need to get at least two while larkin's out mm-hmm. i mean he might be out for four games but I don't, I, they're another one that it's like what Bobby was talking about with, with Nashville. Why trade a first round pick to get a guy who's going to maybe win you one round? Yep. It's just stupid. Yep. So yes, me, for me, them getting in was the win. Yep. I would have liked to see them. I like the way Lions playing. I don't need them to make a goalie move yet. Okay. I'd love them to make a goalie move this summer, That's what I but wanted. I would have loved like a, um, like a Toth. I yeah, would have loved right. Toff on Detroit. I would have loved Zucker on Detroit. Like, beef up some of your wing situation there. Um, I would have liked that a lot, so that's why they get... What did I give them? You gave him a C, C, I think. I, I'm giving him D for the same reason. I wanted goalie, and I wanted... I, I gave um, him C minus. I wanted just, like, agree. I didn't want him to overspend on nothing, but I wanted, the, like, a mid a mid guy that they have term on where you're like, oh, wow, yeah. great pickup. Like, that's going to really matter yeah. next year. You know, like a... Looking at that decor right there, Blakey, like a Matt Dumba would have looked great there. Yep. You know, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. New York Rangers. I'm first. Yeah. Go D. <sighs> I disagree. They, they are a piece away. They didn't get it. We're getting a lot of chirps that maybe, maybe, uh, they were allowed to trade a first. We'll never know, mm-hmm. <laughs> but they sure didn't. Um, we said before, I don't love Wenberg's game. Um, and I just like they they feel, they're a really good team right now, and they felt mm-hmm. a piece away. How many times being Bees fans did we not make that move where you're like, come on, yeah, like this is a maybe a cup year. Yeah. Everyone's loading up, can do something, and we and they didn't. So D, I, I'm gonna give the Rangers a C plus because I like the moves. I, I know I, I know I said I don't like Wenberg for the Rangers, but I I like his game, and you know he had a great first game. Yeah, and and I think the Rangers needed help on the bottom six. Uh, I know Ross is playing on the top six, but that allows yeah, yeah. people to pop down. It's the addition by addition thing. Um, I think 
Roslovich and Wenberg are going to be good for them. The reason they only get a C plus for me is because th this is it, guys. Like, yeah, right. They're they're not done after this year, but they are very much in their window, and in my opinion, the backside of said window. So they they needed to go for it. For me, I don't care what the prices were. You saw all of these other teams that they're going up against going for it. Gensel getting added by the Canes, Tarasenko going to Florida, and then not to mention everything going on in the West. I think you needed to respond, and yes. I don't think they responded. Yeah, let me rephrase. I don't dislike Wenberg's game. I dislike Wenberg's game in added to this Rangers team mm. in terms of what they needed. Like I was yeah. like, yo, that's that wasn't the solve here. Yeah. Wanted them to go for it, wanted much bigger. One thing was interesting. So Vegas makes all these moves. You know what the one piece they kept on to? Held on to? Held on to yeah, yeah. was the 2024 first round pick. Oh, dude. I know. Every we'll get other to that. future first yep. round pick and second is gone. And I look at the Rangers, they have all the first round picks for 24, 25, 26. Why didn't we trade one of those? I know, yep. man. Like, I, I get the theory of wanting to make a pick at the, th the sphere. sphere. Trade neg the next year. Trade the next year. Good years. point. And, and, dude, also, man, you what really always drives me nuts, uh, there are names that come up that we hear about, right? Guys who are on the block. Gensel. And they made a play for Gensel. Mm -hmm. um, dude, I don't know, by the way, I don't know if that was uh, Pittsburgh going, no, we're not letting the Rangers get better with Gensel. Or if the Rangers, or excuse me, Pittsburgh went like this, Capo Cup fucking stinks. Yeah. They're not doing that trade. But one of those two things yep. happened. Because it seemed like their package was better. Yeah. If it was, in fact, a first Kako and uh, Othman, I think it was. Were they dangling Othman? That's Othman? what I've heard. I've heard that that was their package for Gensel, and Pittsburgh said no. And that, said they that... took... They they took three prospects from Carolina and Bunting three and, B prospects and not the best prospects yeah. Carolina has and not even securing yeah. a first round and a pick. second yeah the first so, round pick only becomes a first if they make it to the final yes so it's basically crazy. a second round yep. pick crazy I thought so, that move by Dubis was terrible awful so yeah my last thing on this one is I I can't stand when teams get obsessed with the players on the market yep. and don't get crafty like Vegas did yeah. go hey sharks yep. we'll take hurdle. Yep. Like, go find someone. Yeah. Oh, and Pacioretty, dude. I was like, I had another thing to say. Like, I thought that was going to come through, and yeah. then I give them a fucking A minus. Yeah. You know, like I, it, it sounds like B Patches plus. though was his choice. Yep. So I don't blame yeah. New York for that. But you know. Yeah. I don't get care. Johnny I Gaudreau. get I, I grade go success, not your fucking. Go effort. retain seventeen percent of Johnny Gaudreau's salary for the next five years, yep. just like Sharks did, and put Johnny Gaudreau on your first right wing line. Look at that. Boom. Carolina Hurricanes, you're up. Uh, a a a a flat A. Yeah. Um, a, I put a minus. A's. I just had a stroke. <laughs> yeah. I was considering a plus. Gensel, Gensel, Gensel. I mean, they did it. They went and got yep. Gensel for nothing. And Koozie. For nothing. Koozie. Yeah, for and nothing. Koozie. Fucking Jesus yeah. Christ. Oh yeah. My God. Like, yeah. The, a plus. A plus. And, and, yeah, and I'll, maybe, I'll tell God. you this, dude. If they don't make it to the Eastern Conference Finals, Rod Brindamore, you're fired. Yep, that's probably true. And I'm, I'm not calling my shot. I'm yeah, saying yeah. if I were their ownership, I would straight up do that, dude. Because you are the best team in the Met now. Yep, and if you d if you can't get over this hump that you've been stuck on for years yeah. with this, you're fired. Another ad that they got without making a trade was Freddie Anderson coming back. From Dude, okay, plot. big one. That was huge. So I went a minus because I was like the only thing that would have pushed Pierre, me to a plus is is one of the goalie moves. Yeah, but you're right, and I like the reason I'm still concerned is because I don't know that Freddie can do it for them either. And like I would have loved like if they did what they did and a goalie. I'm like, A, you winning the cup, and B, you're getting an A plus from me. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I do think they're okay riding yeah. with Freddie. Yeah. Uh, Flyers. Um, the fact they got a first round pick for Sean Walker, that like that's insane. And stunning. I don't hate it all. The like I don't even think they're gonna make it. So yeah. I'm like, dude, I know it's crazy. Like it's bold. You're in the playoffs and you're just selling off assets. Yeah. But I'm like, dude. You're cooked. Yeah, B for me. Uh, I put a B too. You got a first round for Walker, and uh, you also uh, Drysdale was an. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, good they, call. They got I'll take. The, yeah, hey, B plus. I so, like yeah, that move. Yeah. Um, Devils. F minus. F minus, yeah. dude. Yeah, one yeah. of the worst F deadlines minus, I've dude. ever it's, seen. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, dude, Fitz has like lost his mind, and he uh, so, so just such a savvy guy normally too. It, it's crazy. <laughs> like, like you didn't make a move. You 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 fumbled the bag. On multiple goalie trades, it sounds yep. like it's like how they let that. Markstrom has said he was like, "Yeah, I was, I was, I was yep. mentally out." Yep. And you you let that fall apart, 
and then you fucking sh humiliate yourself with the offer you gave to Tyler yep. Foley, who is your leading goal scorer and such an important veteran piece of that team. Mind to the blowing. Point where if Toff, like they, they, they've, what they made some statement. They're like, the door is open to revisit the con. If I were Tyler Toffoli, I would look at Fitz and go, bang, suck my sack, dude. Yep. Are you kidding me? Like, you want to re talk when they lowballed him on both yep. years and, and AAV? Get fed, yep. man. And you then don't get a first round for him. Yeah. You don't get a first round pick for Tyler Toffoli. You ass hat. So I, I hate it. I think it's a, just a complete shit show. Horrific. Your goaltending goes from Vanacek, Schmid, and Dawes to Kakinen and Allen. Yeah. Like, and people are acting like that was good. I had Devils fans in the DMs being like this, dude, I love the goalie moves. And I was like, I bet you do. Yeah. You idiots. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. F minus. Pittsburgh Penguins. Um, I give them a D plus. Mm, okay. Go uh, on. Uh, you 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 made the right move in moving Gensel. Yep. You had to move Gensel. I think the return is awful. Yep. And dude, again, I'm sorry. We I, I want to stop talking about this. It's over. Trade more. Yep. How do you not have a conversation with Evgeny Malkin and say, do you want to go somewhere? Want to go to Florida? <laughs> and maybe they did. So yeah, yeah. you know, but dude, we great success. I don't grade what you tried. That's why yeah, I got the it, Bruins it, in it's, it's I don't care that you D, tried. D plus. But I'm like, dude. How do you not take advantage of that and trade Evgeny Malkin for, for retain half his salary? Yep. Trade him for a first round pick. That like fucking good lord. Trade everybody. C plus for me would have traded more. You saw, and I'm not saying it's because of this, but like Gensel goes out the door, they get buried by the cap six nothing. Yep. Like the team knows that we're kind of in blow it up mode. They had to trade Gensel. I'm glad they did. I don't like the return. That's why it's a C plus. Similar to what you said about Toff. No rule that Gensel doesn't come back. Mm -hmm. You know, like if they're like, hey, if they end up tr swinging Gensel for those prospects and bunting and a second, let's call it, and then Gensel resigns, I'm like, yeah, that was actually a fucking. This goes up to a A minus because yeah. I'm like, what a play. Yeah. Um, would have liked to see more. Would have liked to seen sit on the Avs. Thank you for playing, Dallas Stars. You have a B. So do I. B. Um, Tanev, love the ad, ad. great return. Yeah. <laughs> perfectly out of perfectly value. Perfectly out of return. I don't think they needed much They didn't much need more. much. Yep. So. The Stan Coven call up. Is yes, yes. Stank. We another, talked about that yeah. the other day. Yeah. Stanks and, oh, we talked about it on the live. Yeah, yeah, yeah Stanks yeah, a trade, Stank, basically. Stanks is a trade. Do you guys like the the nickname, Stanks? Stanky? Yes, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. People, been, Stanky people have been dude. loving Yeah, that's yeah, amazing. <laughs> he's, he's a great player. He's been insanely successful at every level of his career. If you go look at his stats in juniors and then in the HL, He's just overperforming. He's doing it in the NHL. Great ad. Tanev, great defensive ad that helps Miro. Done. Done. Uh, Winnipeg Jets. I would have I, I would have said a B plus, but I'm going A minus because they got top for nothing. Um, and they, Monahan, I think is great. I know it wasn't yeah, deadline, that's but right. like they, Monahan counts. Yeah. Um, they they did an incredible job of uh, beefing up their top six. And and I think you know we're seeing Toff right now playing with Ayafalo and Monahan on the second line, but I could swap him in Ehlers easy any day. Velarde's and also out. Velarde, yep, yep is going to be in the mix there too. Um, the big thing for me is that your power play just got better with. Them. Oh my god! So a minus. a minus, and the Jets are in it, baby. I'm yep. pumped for them. Uh, Avs. B plus for me. Okay. Um, I love Middlestat. I think saying goodbye to Bowen is so devastating. But I think that was going to be a hard re-sign in a couple of years. Yep. They have such good defense. Got Walker. Um, got Walker to, to fill that hole. Like, it's it's that thing. It's like, well, yep. you lost Byron. What do you, well, you got Walker. Yeah. So you got Walker. You get Casey Middlesat to play second-line center. What they've been needing is that second-line center. Yep. I like it. I thought they were going to do something crazy. Yeah. Get, like, honestly, Sid. a hurdle. I thought yeah. they were Well, yeah. That would have been sick. Yeah. Um, but I thought they were going to get, like, a hurdle. Yep. Um, but... I love middle shot there. Yeah. The one thing that they really need, and we touched on this earlier, but they needed a backup. Goalie. Yeah. Yes, dude. Yeah. So I know. Yeah. Georgiev is playing too much time. We, we, we already talked about this episode. We don't need to waste B it. B minus for me. Yeah. I would have liked a backup goalie. I liked the two guys they picked up, Walker and Middlestat. I thought the return for both was high. Mm -hmm. So B minus. Another two guys that they picked up were huge were Jakob Trennan and Brandon Duhame. Yeah. Both over 150 hits so far. Yeah, I love the Duhame. Get heavy. Those two, Trennan's good too. Those I, two in the playoffs yeah. on Get the heavy, bottom dude. six. Yep. I love yeah. that. That Those two were very... Not back to um, a B. Those two were very Tampa Bay Lightning ads. Like yeah. very under the radar and all of a sudden people go, Jesus, dude, their bottom six is brutal to play yeah. against. And yeah. Yeah. Preds. 
C for me. Confusing. Confusing deadline. Yeah. Some weird there. trades. Trade Soros. Like, I, you know, didn't <laughs> trade Soros, that is. Yeah, the C, I, I agree with the C, and it's almost like a, uh, a did not complete C. Yeah. Me. Like, they they made some interesting moves. I liked some of their moves, but, um, like, Anthony Beauvillier was a fine ad. Zucker is yep. a good ad. They didn't move much. Like I said, the, the Tommy Novak extension yeah. was, was awesome. Yeah, good call. But but Zucker and Beauvillier to me were just kind of funny. Like, okay, yeah, what are you guys doing? It, yeah, it's <laughs> but 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 weird. it's similar to Boston, where I'm like, I think they're going to make playoffs, but they're not. They're, they they yes. know what they're doing. Okay. Um, and given that everyone froze on the big goalie movements, yep. I don't. I'm not hating them for freezing as well. Canucks. Um, B plus. Okay. Resigned PD and you got Lindholm. Yep. B minus for me, just because I think they did want one more. But they did their moves winger. early, dude. Yeah. They got Zadorov, they got Elias Lindholm. Oh, Zadorov. Who was, was going to be yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, B, these, these B, weren't B, deadline moves. B, yep. But they got Lindholm, they got yep. Zadorov, and they have re signed PD. Yeah. Like that is a B plus. Okay. I hope Lindholm picks it up. I love it. He will. Yep. He will. Uh, Oilers. Um, B. Really? Yeah. I mean, they, they to me, they did move like the Perry move was a big one. Perry, I love the Perry um, move. Good and call. And then, uh, you know, that wasn't a trade though. Eh? They I, I think up. Adam Henrique yeah. is such a good ad, dude. Such yeah. a good ad. Uh, I I think Adam Henrique on that team is going to be fantastic. Uh, I could have used defense. That's all I'm saying, dude. I went C minus just because I was like, yeah. I love the depth there, but I'm just like, it was scoring was like depth scoring the Oilers' worry going into the you playoffs. Know, Ekel, Maybe Ekholm but, and Bouchard are solid. Yep. Um, like I would have helped goalie Andy. Yeah, yeah. And they did. I, I yeah. I, I I'm I'm happy with B. Yeah. C minus. <laughs> uh, Kings. F. Yeah, I put D. I mean, like you did nothing, <laughs> and and uh, as I said last week. <laughs> The, it's it, I think it's insane the hip like they've hypnotized fans not just Kings fans but NHL fans yeah. and being like yeah like hopefully they can make it in the playoffs what yep like they I dude dipshit over here give me a dash five for this in our New Year's episode I said I, they're going to the cup yeah and yeah they sure did completely fallen apart and now they're acting like they're like this yeah if we get in we're happy like, what are what? you talking about dude look at these lines. Quinton Byfield, Anja Kopitar, Adrian Kempe, Kevin Fiala, Phil Deneau, Trevor Moore, Alex Leferrier, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Alex Turcotte, Trevor Lewis, Blake Lazat, Arthur Kaliev. That team is a is a wild card team. And then their defense, dude. Like, you are a good team. Oh, my God. You are way too good yep. for this. They also have Arvidsson and Mike yeah. Anderson injured. Yep. Yes. Like, you are way too good for this. I wanted some moves in L.A. And I Me think too, they're dude. still, I... like, reeling from that free fall that they're like, oh, Christ, like, let's just settle the ship here. But I'm like, dude, dude, we're, the, wake up. The Kings are in trouble, man. Like, if they, if they, God forbid, if they miss playoffs and then... Yeah, they're I'm, ahead of Vegas right I've now. I've got bad news for them. If they, if they miss playoffs, which I don't think will happen, but if they then just lose in the first round with a very, like, whimpery effort, yeah. Blake is gone. Definitely. You think so? Yes, dude. This has been a disaster. Disaster, yeah. yeah. But, but but out of nowhere. Like, everything was golden. And yeah. then one horrible but dude, month. part of your... No. It's been a, it's been a horrible th three months now. One horrible month. I would have loved to know, like, what they were... You know, the, the, the Boston and L.A. trade rumors yeah, were going. I would have loved to know what was, like, dangled going back the other way. Yeah. Yep. And you know what I no. hate about all those, dude? It's it's... It's that that classic like, dude, we had a lot up in the air and then nothing happened. Why did, why was it with only one team? Yeah, you should have had five things in the works. And when the Boston thing fell apart, you go to the next one. If that one fell, you go to the next. Like they yeah. had to do something. They did nothing. Yeah, and, it, and it's like you don't know if Dowdy and Kopitar are going to be able to play like this next year, the year after. Yeah. Like yep. it's it. I agree. I, I would have loved to see them do something a little more. Yep. Yeah. I know that they were they didn't really want to trade that first round pick, especially with them not necessarily being a top team at this point in time because they had they had, yeah, they haven't pick. picked in the yeah. first round in I think three years. So uh, yeah, weird deadline for them. Uh, really hope they get in the playoffs and and you know can yep. you know, turn yep. things around. Last one, Vegas. A plus. Only reason I didn't give Florida an A plus is because the curve was set by the Golden Knights. Yep. A hammer A plus A plus Hannafin hurdle free money free money free money yeah. if I hope they get healthy dude because if they do they're so scary mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. As you all know by now, Dan and I have teamed up with BetMGM this year to offer you the illest deals in the game, and I have a great one for you at the moment. It's a bet get. You download the BetMGM app, put $5 into your account, and put your put your money on anything. I put 5 bucks on a Sabres over last week, lost. I put 5 bucks on a Senators money line last week, lost. Doesn't matter. You can lose the bet, and automatically BetMGM puts 150 bucks into your account, which you can put on future wagers, which we will hopefully win. No guarantees from this guy, but we will hopefully win. So use promo code NETTERS150. That's N-E-T-T-E-R-S-150 to get this going. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. For New York, call 1-800-327-5050 for Massachusetts, 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP for Arizona, 1-800-BETS-OFF for Iowa, 1-800-981-0023 for Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only, subject to eligibility requirements. Rewards are non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days in partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in D.C., Mississippi, New York, Nevada, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. All right, let's kick it to overtime. Blake, what do you got for us on armchair? So, yeah, we got armchair GM. Uh, So this week's theme is they must be a Stanley Cup champion. And so to recap on last week, uh, it was a very underwhelming week. Oh, wow. I noticed that. Very. So, Dan, you won this week. Hey. 13 points. Yeah. 13? (laughs) Yeah, it was brutal. (laughs) <laughs> Both our teams were just awful. Chris, you had eight points. Incredible. I think you had a couple health bombs too. Ew, you hate we to had hear. we had Quick and Chickering on Dan's team with fat zeros, and then we had Kane, Carlson, and Corpusello all with fat zeros on on uh, yeah, Chris's Corpy, team. Yeah, Corpy, I think was like out. Yeah, yeah. So so the score is narrowed. So uh, it's uh, one ninety one to one eighty seven for Chris. So right. Dan, it's your first pick this week. And the theme is. Must be a Stanley Cup champion. I will take Nathan McKinnon. I will take Nikita Kucherov. I'll take Kale McCarr. <laughs> I was gonna say we're just gonna pump. I might like... take the entire. Uh, <laughs> I might take the entire oh, Colorado me, roster dude. here. I will take. Oh man, Victor Hedman. Oh shit, good one. Uh, I'll take Brad Marchand. Ooh, good one. Really good pick, Dan. The last dude. The last. Yeah, that's win. friggin' sad. I'll take Moose. I'll take Jonathan Marchessault. Okay. We should, we should I, have a clock here. Uh, I have like one the NFL now. Where Shot I can, clock. Where, yeah, where I can <laughs> kick him off. I have one now that I think it might be yours. It side. definitely is. I don't want to do it to you. <laughs> it definitely um, is. Okay, my pick. I'm no. taking Drew Dow. No! <laughs> I'll take Shea Theodore. I'll take Vassy. Yeah, yeah. So realistically, Blakey, my options here are Kemper, who I'm not taking. Bennington. Bennington, Bennington, who's playing pretty good, actually. Um, Aiden. Aiden Hill, who's playing terribly. Jonathan yeah. Quick. Flurry. Flurry. I'll take Flurry. And then, of course, I'll take Sidney Crosby. Okay, now it's time for Saucy Predictions, and we have a question here, maybe. Dan, first off, you, your prediction was? Uh, I predicted I predicted that Jake Gensel would be traded. Was. And that... And I'm going to say again, this was an emotional hedge that Frank Petrano would be traded because I didn't want Frank to go. Yep. And that was dumb because I should have just trusted my gut that he wasn't going to go. He didn't go, so I have to eat. So Dan's eating for sure. Now here's the question, boys. I said three goalies would move at the deadline because we've been talking Olmark. We've been talking Markstrom. We've been talking Soros. Uh, you know, I think we, I think maybe we were talking Allen too, but like there was a lot of heat. I said three would be traded. Literally none of them, none of those top three got traded. Yeah. But... <laughs> Vanacek got traded, Kokkinen got traded, uh, Allen got traded, Malcolm Subban, the Jackets acquired Malcolm Subban, uh, Ludwig, the Panthers, uh, the, uh, the Panthers acquired, oh, two more goalies, the Panthers acquired goalie Magnus Helberg from the Penguins for goalie Ludwig Weber in a conditional seventh rounder, the San Jose Sharks acquired goalie Devin Cooley from the Buffalo Sabres for a seventh rounder, so like, Eight eight goalies got traded. Okay. I, Does that count? I am calling bullshit. This <laughs> yeah. this ballyhoo will not stand because if even one of those was someone that came out of your mouth, I would consider. Jake Allen came out of my mouth. Came out of my mouth, sir. <laughs> I said he would be traded, and you were like this. Oh yeah, maybe. Not one of the people you hung your hat on got traded. So I my vote is bullshit, and it's not bitter. It's just we're being fair. Blake. 
I think I, I think I win. You think I lose. Blake I think, breaks the tie. So, one, it's just hilarious watching you eat the, the hot chicken and try to talk. But I think, you know, you didn't say those guys. Yep. All Thank Mark you. Soros, Markstrom. But we all knew that's who you were implying. Yep. Thank you. Um, so, and but, you know, you did get a lot of goalies traded. But how many of them will see an NHL crease this season, let alone next ever. year? <laughs> yeah, if ever. <laughs> Uh, so I say no. I say you do not get it, and you both have to eat spicy chicken. Listen, yet, I'll yet. eat, but there will be an appeal filed, <laughs> just so everybody is clear, because eight goalies were traded at up. the deadline. Yeah. All right, here we go. I think we should do a postseason uh, kangaroo court. Yeah. yeah hey, I yeah. like that. You eating one of those or two? I'm going to eat one. Okay. This is so awful. You did the hotter one this week, yeah, too? Yeah, yeah. Oh. What an awful, awful segment this is. Oh, fuck. <coughs> yeah, which one of you came up with this idea? Chris. I'm, I'm the worst at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The heat has set in. I made the mistake of, like, kind of swallowing and then Same. not, yeah. so I just coated my throat in it. <clears throat> So I don't feel good right you now. You don't have any plain ones to wash it down? No. Why he mixed all of them, dude? Like a fucking <laughs> asshole. That was pretty stupid. <laughs> okay. Do you, do you have yours? No. All right, I'll go first. Oh, my God, dude. This is so bad. I want to eat another one so bad, but there, <coughs> why did I sauce all of them? Yeah, I was going to say something, but... Okay. My prediction this, this week, this week's coming from the heart. Um... We gave the Jets an A minus six. I think they had some great ads for great value. Tyler Toffoli on the Jets. They have three home games this week. He's going to be up there meeting the boys on a home stand. I wanted to go three points in three games, but because it's a sausage prediction, I'm going four points for Toffoli in his three first three games as a Jet. Okay. <clears throat> okay. My saucy prediction. I like the points thing. God, I'm so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> My saucy prediction. Detroit Red Wings are currently out of a playoff spot. They have four games, I believe. Nope, three games. No, four games from now until next episode. I am predicting that they will be in the first wild card spot. By next episode. Okay. Ready. They play Buffalo, Arizona, Buffalo, and Pittsburgh. That's going to be 4-0. 4-0. Oh. Oh. Let's go Wings. That's not my prediction. Okay. I'm saying like. Just playoffs. Go Wings and yeah. let's go to Foley. Let's go. Good okay. Stuff. We're going to figure this out. Um, that is it for us this week at the MD Nerds Podcast. We love you guys. Do us a favor, guys. If you listen to this episode. We're going to do you some fun giveaways for hitting 100,000 followers on Instagram, which is coming up. We're doing some cool merch drops coming up here, so we're going to be giving stuff out to you people. Send our Instagram or send our, our podcast to a friend who loves hockey. Get them to subscribe to the YouTube. Hammer that subscribe. Show us that you did it, and we will toss you guys some merch. We'll toss you guys some love because we love growing this community. So. If you're not already subscribed, go subscribe now. Have a friend subscribe. Let's keep growing. And until we see you next week, skate hard. Whew.